What is going on up here? I never know, man. Day, day man. Day man. Fighter of the night, man. Champion of the sun. Sun. You're a master of karate and friendship <laughs> for everyone. A day man. That's it. Day man. Oh. Oh. Fighter of the night, man. Oh. Oh. Champion of the sun. Oh. <laughs> You're a master of karate and, and friendship for everyone. Day man. Day man. Oh. Oh. Fighter oh. of the night, man. Oh. To a new edition of Size Corner, part of Rick Barry's house. Hall of Famer Rick Barry is not around, and when he's not, I take the helm solo and run this little shop here. I'm really stoked to have my guests on today because they host a really entertaining podcast. I was a guest of theirs. It's been a couple years now, but now it's their turn to come on my show. I get to ask the questions. I'm super excited. I have Jennifer and Katie with me, hosts of a really funny podcast called Brutally Blunt. You could follow it on Instagram at Brutally Blunt Podcast. How are you two doing? Where in the world are you? Let's start with that because you two are not in the same location. So Jennifer, I'll start with you. Yeah, we are doing good. A little bit nervous because typically we like to ask questions. Like, oh, yes, oh, yeah. I we yeah. like to. Be I don't in like when people ask me things. questions. Yeah, yes. right. But you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, but right now, I'm currently in California. I don't live here. I'm a New Yorker. Yeah, I've given up the California life. Um, I'm but still in I'm California. Why would Hopefully you... we'll still go. To, I still want to go to New York, though. That's still the dream and the goal. Why would you give up the California life? What's so bad about it that New York is giving you? Um, well, San Francisco just sucks. Like, that's yeah. just bottom line. Sure. Um, but as far as L.A. goes, I don't know. Like, I'm just not in. We got to connect back connection issue. Are you like, back? I am a different person. Okay. I'm back. I'm back. Sorry, back. guys. It's okay. Um, but yeah. So All I right. just wanted something different, you know? My my honest opinion is New York is the greatest city in the world. I, I respect you for living there. I've never done that. I've visited. Um, it is an awesome place. Uh, and then Katie, where are you? I know you're you're a Southern California native. Yes. Jennifer's from Danville, a town I'm all too familiar with. Uh, <laughs> I grew up kind of near there. Uh yeah. So where are you, Katie? Still Southern California. Um, I've been here my whole life. That's why I want to move to New York is just like a change of pace in life. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. What change? You, like, you look like I mean, a rock star. I mean, what, what change in pace in life do you need? Like, I feel like you have everything going on for you. So what do you need to change up in your life? That's not going right, right now. I don't know. They say in life, you need to switch up your energy and I am all about switching up energy. So I think it's time to do it. Eventually. I don't know when I'll take the plunge, but eventually I will. <laughs> all right. At some point, I'll, it's just like it. a different vibe there. Like, yeah. so, you know, why not? Very different. Yes. New yeah. York is night and day. There's different, no doubt about that. Different men there. I don't know if you can get much better than LA. I mean, they're kind of like Peter Pan syndrome here anyways. So I think New York's the same. I think you're going to get. Well, I, I feel like if you're in New York, the Peter Pan syndrome is not a syndrome. It's just a way of life. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's like a lifestyle, uh, right? If you don't want to grow up, you want to continue having a lot of fun uh, without having family and all that crap involved. Yeah. New York's the great place to go. Right. Um May I ask your, I know, I know it is completely rude to ask a lady what her age is. So give us a ballpark. What is the, the five to 10 year range you two fall in, unless you are comfortable sharing your ages, but where, what are we looking here? So you can get a better perspective in life in terms of where you two are. Yeah. I mean, I don't give a fuck. I'll tell my age. I am three zero, the big 30, just turned 30 a few months ago. 30. 30. Um, yeah. Congrats. And I'm very 31. clean 30. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Katie, what is Yeah, Cyrus, you know? it's a clean 30. Love it. Yeah. And I'm 31. Wow. So I'm the older friend. Yes. Well, yeah, I like to hang friend. out with older friends. If, if you two had told me you were like 22, 23, I know, I know you're not that young because at least Katie, we go way back. I mean, and, please just tell us that. It's fine. I, I love hearing it. it. I, I, I'm not just blowing smoke. I, I really genuinely- I think maturity-wise, we're still a little- 
behind we've had well. psychics tell us that we are very immature my psychic also I says i look younger than i am emotionally we're just like yeah is your immaturity um intentional is it just uh is it just how you are what, what is the reason for the immaturity um so childhood trauma okay. um no i'm just kidding um but it would have been a valid it, reason it would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's not intentional i'm not in a it's hurry just like, why would you like, grow up yeah yeah What's grow the up point? life is I was gonna say life is short but like I mean why not be younger for you're only as old as you feel someone Fair. once told me that and I was like okay well I okay. feel like you literally sound you sound like a 50 year old man trying to hit on a that's literally what that's he was the line they always use <laughs> <laughs> but he was married with kids but <laughs> this is your last an uncle no, no, my friend's uncle was oh, like, You're I only see. as okay. old as you feel. And I was that, like, Thank you. Very I true. I agree with that. I agree with I that. Mean, like for... But I do think like guys are very immature, like at any age. And I feel like that's just like an excuse for men half the time to say that. It's a poor excuse. I mean, I don't think you're going to get far in life if, if, if a man continues that trend. Although I guess right. the old adage, nice guys finish last, there's a lot of truth to that because I do see mm-hmm. a lot of you, Richter ladies out there um dating total losers and i always I always feel like there's a contradiction there it's like you know we individuals should mature right otherwise like you're, you're going to be stunting your growth and whatnot um but at the same time i also i always see the the stereotypical attractive woman like you two ending up with the biggest douchebags on the planet who are totally immature why is that by the way oh, why do beautiful women end up with such a-holes most of the time your thoughts so i feel like that's a very like LA New York thing. I don't think that happens everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do think that the girls that do end up with assholes are the girls that are most insecure. So Mm -hmm. I don't like for me, nice guys don't finish last. Like Mm -hmm. I have dated the nicest people. They like, they look like fugly, ugly little rats. But like they are genuinely nice. I think she's right about the insecurity thing. And I think okay. it's also like um for me, I'm an avoidant attachment style. So if you don't know your attachment styles, you Same. can do quizzes. And I think you're drawn, you're also subconsciously drawn to people who are just like you. So I think when you go for the assholes, it's because they're also emotionally unavailable, like myself. So it's easier because you're like, oh, okay, well, you're an asshole. But like, it's also, I don't really want it to go anywhere with these assholes. You know what I mean? It's fun for the moment, but I'm not going to get emotionally attached because I'm an avoidant. So that's why I think a lot of girls go for assholes or they like the challenge or something like that. And you're like, I can fix them. And I'm done with projects. I don't need to (laughs) fix anybody. The projects are over. I'm not in my twenties anymore. Fix yourself. Like I'm done. And I kind of hate when guys say like, nice guys finish last. Like, oh, I don't even have a shot. Like that is absolute bullshit. Like, it's just that you guys aren't coming up to us. Like you get intimidated. You're taking yourself out of the game before you, the game has even started. Like, that's your fault. That's not on me. Like, has anyone ever come up to me and said, Hey, I think you're really pretty. Can I buy you a drink? And I've been like rude to them no never in my life never like, in my life and if you want to talk to me you can talk to me yeah the only people that I'm rude are like two are the complete assholes, assholes like right. the douchebags like I would almost rather you not be attractive because like if you are unattractive and if you are attractive and treat me like an asshole then I look like a dumb bitch so I would just rather you know if it turns out bad at least you aren't a 10 out of 10 because it's like well damn you know but like, were you, say, were you two same? But did you two have the same attitude when ten years ago? No, no. Okay, but ten you years ago, I was twenty. So you are but maturing. I, like my brain wasn't even like fully developed then. No, like, your right. frontal lobe You're, is not developed right. until age 21, 22. So ten years I ago, no. If not later, yeah. And I wasn't like, able even- to make decisions. <laughs> the assholes that we went for weren't even like physically attracted. They just had this like delusional self confidence. Yeah, absolutely. And, like I was always aware physically I was better than everyone like that I was like going for but it was because my ego that I've worked that I've worked on I've learned and done a lot of research on ego and your ego is like what is like protecting you almost so it's like you go for just like these people and these like 
bad situations and when they don't like you back you're like what the fuck so you keep wanting to try to go for them just to prove to your own ego i can get them when you don't even fucking want them in the first place Hmm. they have nothing to offer you but it's all just to satisfy your own ego and until you get over that you're not you're gonna not go for those nice guys that's well you two sound like you have matured a lot i mean these are very mature responses you're giving me so I, i maybe immature is not the right label to apply to both of you in terms of why you have no desire to really settle down and you want to go explore the world. Um, my, my, my counter to, to this desire of uh, living freely and, and doing what you want and not being strapped down with major commitments, at least on a family level, is that um, mother nature is not a feminist. And what I mean by that is you do have a clock, biologically speaking, right. you want to have kids someday. Is that in the, is that in the map? I mean, oh, yeah, me personally, but- I don't have a clock. I She'd, don't, and I don't, no, so, I froze my eggs. So I don't want that pressure on me. Like, okay. you know, I want to end up with the right person, but also it's nowadays, it's just like a little bit different. You know, we have like all these alpha male assholes, like back in the day, like if you're going to be an alpha male, at least like you're providing, but like, I can't put myself in a situation where like, I'm putting myself on maternity leave. Like I'm stepping back in my career when like realistically, like you can't support us. So it's right. like, I'm not going to just settle down for anyone. Cause I'm lonely. I'm not going to worry about my clock. My clock will be fine. It'll happen when it's supposed to happen. If it doesn't happen, then I have less leeches sucking off my tit. And then that's great too, you know? So I'm just like, not concerned about it. Like, do I feel like I need a man? I don't even need a man to have a kid, to be honest. Like you no. have to be enhancing my life in some way for me to even be entertaining it. And if you're not then, and I guys get so upset when girls say that, but it's like, realistically, like when women get married, it reduces their lifespan. And when men get married, it increases their lifespan. So why would I want to die early just so that you can have a housewife, like spend some money and hire someone, hire help. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand. I never heard that before. I've heard that about men. I've never heard that about women though. Yeah. Like, women's lifespans decrease when they're married. When they get married. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the happiest, it's statistically proven that women who are single and childless are the happiest individuals. And the long living ones. Mm-hmm. Really? Because you're decreasing yeah. our life. You're adding nothing oh but stress God. to our lives because women enhance a man's life. Yeah. Whereas like, you're not really adding to ours. You're adding more to our plate. So well, like, I yeah. Said, and society our- nowadays is like, you still have to work, you know, like I'm still going to have to work and I enjoy working. So I'm, I want to work, but at the same time, you also have like certain men in your ears being like, you have to play a gender role. So I'm supposed to work all day then come home and do a second job while you rest. Like, how does that fucking make sense? So yeah, that's going to decrease my lifespan. Now, this Absolutely. of course, uh, these scenarios are all obviously provided the man is just a total, you know, inconsiderate, right. thoughtless human being who is selfish, right. narcissistic. There are health, I mean, you do agree that there are healthy relationships out there, right? Oh, 100%. Okay. Um, I'm also a big believer in the universe and like everything happens when it happens. I go to psychics. Um, I know I can have kids in my 40s. So ever since I was 21 True. years old and I was told that, I've never had a fear in my life of having kids. I've never had a fear of my biological clock ticking. And I'm also good with adoption. So I don't need to have my own biological kids. I can adopt a child in a harpy and would love that kid like it was my own so for me I have no even if I what was in a healthy relationship like the the biological factor has like no bearing on like I'm not like uh, the only thing I guess I would be worried about is like if I did biologically have children who that father would be Hmm. that's the only thing I would worry about it's not when I would have the kids it's who's that dad because dads literally fuck you up for the rest Mm -hmm. of your life or they set you up Right, Fuck you right. Up or set you up. So it's right. and it's the dad that's the one that's the real fucker in the situation. So you have to like make sure you're procreating with the right person. That is very true. No, there's no doubt about that. And and a huge reason I called you ladies is because I like I'm I'm newly single. I do not handle being single well. Um and I threw this idea. I love it. <laughs> I know. I'm like, think I'm I happy mean, for you. what could be better in my mind? I'm not happy for myself, but it's, you know, it's the reality of the situation. What but am I do you do? have ancient attachment style? It sounds like. Yeah, I guess. I, well, well, first of all, tell it me wasn't this. really a question. It was it's, you're telling yeah, you it's more like I'm kind of telling you, I think you might have it if you can't be yeah. alone. Like what makes you not want to be alone? Well, I am alone. I am alone. So I can be, I don't, I just don't like it. It's not a source of happiness for okay. me. Um, I just have more comfort and, and, and it's See, not a dependency. The woman thing. adds to the male's life. 
Well, yeah, yeah, it does. It, yeah, I don't doubt that. Mm-hmm. But I we're fine it. by our fucking self. See, we and you're like, oh, it's just not preferred. But it's like part of it. I think part of it is I'm learning a lot of interesting psychological terms in this recent process. Some friends of mine are opening my eyes up to like terms I never heard of. I didn't realize like? narcissism, for example is so layered and complex Mm -hmm. and in depth. And there's a lot of different like tendencies with that. You throw out like attachment issues. I, Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't need, enlighten me on that. Like what, 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 what is this attachment thing? Because maybe I have this, I don't know. You have avoided, we have, you have avoidant attachment. You have anxious attachment. You have secure attachment, which is the goal of life, secure attachment. It's confident with you and your partner anxious. You're always kind of just like worried that like, they're going to leave you or something's going to go wrong, or you always have to have them by your side avoidant is just like kind of leave me the fuck alone or you just like want your own space to handle and deal with things and if you have an anxious and an avoidant together it's kind of that's typically what gets together and and causes a lot of issues like for example with an avoidant person typically as a child you Mm -hmm. were taught to self-soothe so you Mm -hmm. like you know, if something, you don't know your emotions, like you are sent to your bedroom and you're going to figure it out. And then, you know, but you're used to coping on your own. So it's very difficult for you to bring only I'm in charge of my emotions right? and no one else's. And with the anxious, you like almost like let other people be in charge of your emotions. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm not like, I'm a giver. Like I, I, I'm not someone who is selfish in a relationship Maybe it just, it's just, there's a fulfillment thing there, you know, taking care of someone. Maybe it's. And uh, it's okay to be in a relation, which I'm trying to learn myself. Like it's okay to want to want to be in a relationship. It's just when you feel like you need it to complete you, I think is where the issue. And it's really good that I think it's amazing that you're a giver, but like sometimes you have to remember that like balance is very necessary. Like some of that you should probably be giving to yourself versus giving to someone else. So they can just take and take and take from you until well, you're that's part of what I experienced. Yeah. That's part yeah, of what right. I experienced. And I, I, I just self-awareness hit me like a ton of bricks in terms of the situation I was in. And yeah, I was with someone who was just strictly a taker and who did not put my feelings or wants or needs at all in consideration. Well, have you two ever been in a serious relationship? Yeah. No. Interesting. Yeah. Jennifer, is that by choice? Has it just, as the sparks never been felt and you'd rather wait for that right moment? Like what is the reason for you, Jennifer, that you've never been in one and your thoughts? Yeah. Your my avoidant attachment style has come in hardcore in my life. Um, so I w- was moved at like a pretty critical age in middle school. Okay. Um, so I think that adds to a lot of it. Um, and like Katie said, you know, if you are emotionally unavailable, you tend to go after emotionally unavailable people. Typically for me, now that I'm realizing, and this has been a realization probably in self-reflection in the past month or two, um, Mm -hmm. is that I like to go for people that are emotionally unavailable um, because it's an easy out for me. Like I know my exit route. Um, For example, I was talking to this one guy and we were like dating for like probably a good six, seven, eight months. Um, yeah. And then I knew he was just coming out of like a pretty serious relationship. They lived together and everything. And so he was just like, I'm trying to feel my way out and I don't know what I want right now. And I knew that he didn't want a relationship. So it got to the point where I was like, I want a relationship. And he was like, well, I can't do that right now. And I was like, cool deuces. And I was out. And I never Mm -hmm. once got that. Like he would call me every weekend. He was upset. Mm -hmm. He was crying. He was like, I changed my mind. And I was like, no, I'm out. But I never, the thing is, is I never wanted to be in. So I found Mm. someone that I knew I couldn't go all in with because it was an easy out. So that's typically, it's a very, it's the same cycle with every single person that I talk to. Same exact cycle, different person happens the same way. Is it like a self-defense mechanism where it's yeah, you're protecting totally. yourself? But what if like, uh, what if the guy never left? Like, would you, was, could you have maybe been in a long-term relationship with him? Like now, no. like if he had not done that. So regardless, it would have, it would have ended. Because I don't, I didn't like him as oh, a right. person mm-hmm. at all. Um, so I just put myself in situations that like, I'm not even, to be honest, I'm not even listening when they're talking. Like I have no connection. I'm wearing a mask. Like you don't know me. I don't know you. And I don't want you to. We're never going to be emotionally intimate. We're never going to be emotionally why? intimate. Why? Why? We can why? be physically intimate. Because I have a less... blocker up. Yeah. And that's just what it is. But I'm are working you... on it. I'm taking it down now. Yes. Oh, you but are? Like okay. up to this point. Yeah. You, no one was going to be able to know me. Cause I didn't even know myself to be honest, but like, 
I wasn't going to allow you to get yeah. to know me. And I, really I wasn't trying to get to know you. I really dislike your hometown, by the way, Jennifer. And, and I wonder if that added a complex to you. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if it did, given how shallow and, and ostentatious Danville, California is. I'm sorry if I'm hating on your hometown. I, I grew up very close to there. Um, and I have my opinions, I think, for good reasons, but whatever. Uh, Katie, you you have been in a serious relationship, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, so how, how many of those yeah. have you been in? Just one? Um, I mean, I've had boyfriends, and then I would say, like, one was, like, super serious. And then, um, but it was very toxic, and I was very young. And um, it took me, like, 15 years to officially, like, even cut the cord, like, of him out of my life completely. Um, he actually recently after, like, just called me the other day, and I ignored it, obviously. But, like, obviously. I, well, I was <laughs> really, because I put boundaries up. Okay, and okay. I was like, and I'm done. Sickening that this was I'm how many like, years ago, and you're right. still caught up on this. Like, how did it end? Yourself. How did the relationship end? It was a super toxic fight, per usual. And I was 21, and oh, after oh. that, and but we, I met him when I was 14, and then we started dating when I was like when I was 19, and then I broke up with him at 21, and I wasn't even. I was like, it was like, I was a different person then. I didn't know anything. Like it, it was, a t it's like your karmic love that you go through when you're young. And that, so I'm appreciative. I got it out of the way. Um, but then it kind of set me up after that to like put this wall up. And I was like, I'm done. And okay. I'm never going to let anyone in to do this to me ever again. And I've done that ever since. So you both have had these interesting experiences that have made you create these emotional, uh, boundaries and walls and mm -hmm. and that's interesting but do you do you warn the men ahead of time that this is how no. you are so that they don't no. fall in love why with you? <laughs> no. no oh my gosh that's, you I'm the hunter you know like I why would, would I warn my prey <laughs> I but, would what if, you're I not, mean, but does it not bother you that you might hurt these men that you're getting involved with? I'm not might... hurting them. I can tell you that because they're no, not even... because the typically the guys that I'm going after are people, are people that who don't want to even like date me, like ultimately. Right. It actually, <laughs> like, no, a hundred percent. Like yeah. it's people that like don't want to date me. Yeah. Absolutely. So we're, so we're cool. They're we're setting good. themselves to, you know, hurt. And I've only had one scenario really where they truly got hurt. And that was that guy that I was talking about. Yeah. But like, he then went on to just like, he, he continued on his road of rampage, you know, like he went and like got married and divorced in a year. And, but like, he did that same shit to his ex-girlfriend. So it's right. sometimes it's like, I'm karma, but also like your karma for me, you know, I just, right. I'm not like, I would never truly put myself in a situation because I'm very or, empathetic to hurt an actual good person. Typically, like I won't get to that point. So in other words, if I feel like you're too nice. Sorry, Katie, you, I, uh, you, yeah, say your thought first, please. And, yeah, I'm going to say, I think there's, I, I saw this on Selling Sunset. There's a placeholder and there's the game changer. And I think everyone that I've gone for or we've been, been each other's placeholders. So until that game changer comes around, like that just hasn't happened yet. All like, right. am I open to the game changer now? Yes, but it's taken me 31 years to get here. <laughs> That's good. So, so you, so basically the men that you involve yourselves with. And I'm you sort of open. Sense, what's up? I'm sort of open. I'm not fully open yet. Okay. Okay. Sort, sort yeah, of. That's progress. That's progress from yes. what you two have been saying. So the men you involve yourselves with, I'm guessing you're like total alpha kind of a-hole types who like, you just have no worries about breaking it off at any point because you sense that they will not care either. Is that fair to say, or uh, correct me if I'm, if I'm off here. Yeah. I, mean, I know they're emotionally immature as well. And they're emotionally um, not, not going to be able to connect anyways. So I'm kind of like, well, until you do your own inner work, I can't really be the one to help like guide you through that. Even though naturally that's who I am. I want to help guide everyone and yeah. be like their highest and best selves. And I was like a fixer and like empathetic. And I was like, I want to be here and like understand like your trauma and why you are the way you are. Why are you such an asshole? Why are you? Cause I think you want like as women, like you naturally are a fixer, but I'm like, if you don't want to fix yourself, that's not my problem anymore interesting no. sort of so you so so you when you actually f feel and i'm guessing you you two have been in these situations because again you are uh i'm trying i'm trying not to sound crass saying this but i'm guessing Fair. whatever setting you two are in um 
yeah, men are looking at you and they and with a keen eye, right? I mean, you, you are not you are very attractive individuals. That's, I guess I hope like that's not being inappropriate saying that. But I, I'm guessing you're sensing pretty early on if the guy really likes you, because if that's the case, you're just going to cut him off, right? Because you don't want to hurt him. Do you get in those mm-hmm, situations? Mm-hmm. How do you yeah. end it? How do you how do you let them how do you let them down softly and and gently and or do you not? Um, I become well, I try super not busy. To, yeah, I try not to ghost because I don't want to be yeah. ghosted. I don't want to put you. that negativity out there. Thank you. Um, so it's not that I won't respond, but like I will just slowly taper it off. Yes, yeah. you have. It's the tapering off. It's ah, I can't this week. Can't next week. Oh, something just came up. I'm not really like something's always gonna. I I don't want to ghost you ever, but like. I also know it's not going to go anywhere. So I feel bad, but I'm not like, I almost feel bad. It's not like scary ghosting. It's like, I'm Casper, you know, I'm like, I've I've sensed that in and out. I've I've sensed that. And and I just, I guess that confirms that whenever you're uh, involved with someone and whatever this situation is, when they start, when their responses are more delayed and they're shorter and they're less, you know, fun that's their way of giving you the I'm I'm heading out of this, right? Is that is that fair to say? Well, it depends because no. delayed responses, like people like to play games with that. That could totally right. mean that they actually like you a lot. Um, but yeah, I would sense the tone for sure. Like yeah. if they're like short with you, if they if you're having to like text them two and three times to get them to respond, yes. like no it's just take yourself you're like setting yourself up for failure like gotcha. because eventually they're going to have to get to the point where there's going to have to be blunt with you and be like listen this is not going to fucking work well, this is great advice this is great advice because i think a lot of people in, in either side of the or any side of the gender spectrum if they're really into someone but unfortunately that's the situation you find yourself in sometimes where you really like them but you know the, the, re- the reaction time for the messages can be hours sometimes days and you know, I always take that as a hint. Okay, they're not into me and it's time to move on. If you um, like didn't fucking text me back for days, I'd be like, dude. Yeah, that's a little bye. excessive. That's like, get the fu- <laughs> hours? Okay, but if you don't like, I'm sorry, this isn't like a next business day kind of situation that you're going to get back <laughs> Yeah, we're to closed me. for the weekend. Yeah, sorry, after hours. Like, no, <laughs> you have, like, there's time to respond. Like, sometimes, yes, you're very busy during the day. I don't need someone at my butthole all day texting me all the time. But like, if I like you, I'm going to respond. Otherwise, I'm just like going to be kind of like nonchalant when I'm texting back I don't really care that badly like I, I really do appreciate you two for saying though that ghosting is weak it's such a it's such a bad move it's just a cruel it's move. it is there's ghosting and then there's breadcrumbing but what I is that breadcrumbing is worse breadcrumbing is like when you just like give them little hints every now and then it's I think it's called breadcrumbing it's like and you just kind of keep them, them like yeah you're dangling them yeah. and guys do it a lot just to like kind of keep you around and then it's like oh hey I'm back and then it's like a couple months later hey I'm back or you could be like my ex-boyfriend three years later hey I'm back like when I said <laughs> we're never gonna later. talk again <laughs> literally is the same like, ex-boyfriend who 10 years later called you the, the other day after. yeah but they always come back they always come back and always come back and I'm like what I have said the worst things to men I have been the meanest person to a man and I'm like why do you want to talk to me yeah like, why I don't know what else right. I can do right like, like to tell you like don't fucking be with him don't talk to me like well, the thing is it's like matter. you know when you get like an obsession over something and it's like you just want it like and if it's not clear you're gonna like make up scenarios in your head and like make yourself think that it's something that it's not because and like you guys are guys ignore boundaries guys have no fucking they are just like a boundary what's that I don't know and then they just like keep fucking going and I'm like dude I this is like I'm like are you not embarrassed like still <laughs> messaging me like I if you would ignore my text one time I would be like okay we're done we're oh done. my god yeah like, yeah well I mean, and your avoidance that's like I feel like avoidant people, like when we say something's done, it is actually done. Like yeah. when I say like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. When I say like, I'm done, done. Like there's nothing in this world that could change my mind. I mean, maybe, maybe if you pulled up to my house and left a package on my front door with $500 million, I might think about it, but like that, it has to be something that extreme. Cause when I tell you no, and I'm done, like I've mm-hmm. already put you in a box. I've compartmentalized you. You are dead. You're six feet under. Like it's done. Or you get, or like it's like, 
how I've been working on myself and I really want to apologize to you. That one usually gets me um, oh, because I, no. I usually like, like say oh, sorry. This whole, this whole, oh, I know, but I've gotten so many stars. You can and say like, sorry have, over text. I need one more motherfucker. I know, but they send me a letter see you in person. No, no one needs to see you in person to right. say sorry. It's literally right. a word. Say mm-hmm. sorry. And then that's mm-hmm. it. And I say, thank you. And then let's yeah. move on with our lives. You're absolutely right. Uh, right. So Jennifer, is it safe to say that Katie's going to end up marrying this guy that called her the other day? From that she uh, no, ago? no, no um, that is, definitely not. I would, I would honestly be just. I blocked him on Lord. everything. I've literally blocked really? him for three years. I've had him wow. blocked for years. How did I literally he get had a. Um, I forgot to block the number, but I had him blocked uh. on all my socials, and I had friends block him on socials, but like, um. But no, even I've, or even with other guys, I've tried to like delete their number. And then I'm like, okay, that doesn't really <laughs> work either. Um, I've tried to do all different things, but they always creep, creep in. But creep no, in, this yeah, one, I a hundred percent guaranteed like that this one would never creep its way back in. That's incredible. I'm loving this conversation. You're, you're enlightening me and then some. So what is a, and I know you gotta, you gotta run in just a second here. Uh, first of all, you're, I, if you're if you, like another 15 10 15 you know, yeah. 10 15 okay cool okay yeah. so uh first of all if you want your show added to rick barry's house let me know because um i would love to have your program added to our lineup it's your call uh i i because you two are both warriors fans um that's the whole reason like like we we talked the last time even though we're not even touching sports in this in this uh show today what is in your opinion oh, and my psychic did recently say that my future husband and i are going to bond over sports that's so, interesting. That's interesting. Be, yes. Is, like, that, okay. is that a criteria for both of you? Do they have to be sports a sports fan? Like, no, if, if I didn't give okay. a shit when she brought it up. I was like, oh, like I don't, I don't love sports that much. I mean, yeah, I was like, okay, like does, does he like yeah. the Warriors? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> because that's I would like to say that bonding it, it, over. <laughs> in the defense of all the men out there, there are a lot of good ones. I I, I feel like when you talk and about I men, fully believe it. Yeah, there's the ones you're encountering, and maybe it's intentional so that you're not hurting them. I think but... it's subcon- subconsciously intentional. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're not, it, it's, it's inadvertent. But um, so what is, what should a nice guy do if he wants to settle down? Like, well, what's, what's the path? What if he wants yeah. to end up with someone like you two? They're, they're like, oh my God, I want to get, I want to, I'm ready to chill. I'm done playing this game. Uh, online dating looks awful. I have no desire to touch that, but I might have to. Um, what's, what's the avenue in post pandemic? earth for single guy. I mean, I'm gonna so say I think go personally me like if you're trying to date me if you're listening and you're like wow Jennifer is really the best um the best thing to do is to just be brutally blunt no come up to me and just brutally say blunt. hi buy yeah. me a drink um I take that as a sign of you being serious if you're spending money on me if you're not yeah. buying a drink then I can't take you. It's not that I can't take you serious, but it's just like, I don't know. That time, is time is money. Time is money. It is. Yeah, you're and, if you're not, and if you're just going to chit chat with me, you're wasting my time. But, no, you got to at I've, least buy a drink. But the advice I've always gotten is you're not going to meet a quality person at a bar. And you're, and yeah. you're sitting here telling me that I should go to a bar and buy someone a drink. I mean, drink. you, no, I think go anywhere. People like, to, people like to just create bullshit up in their head. True. Like, because everyone wants to put everything in little boxes and be like, oh, you know, like the best place to meet your man is that church. Well, you know, where else is that church? Cults. So like, you know, it's just, you can't take right. that. I don't, like, take I don't with a grain think- of salt. Like my parents met at a party and they have been married like 31 years or like whatever. Wow. And you can't have wow. a connection. If you meet someone out and you meet someone else, like I've heard of so many stories where it's like, oh, we were supposed to be a one night stand. And then they're like together. Literally yeah. heard that on House Rives. So like, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> but like, look, they're like together. So it's working out and they have kids and a family and it fucking worked. So I just think it like, and then look at people who meet people like, I don't know, you could do an online dating app. But the thing about the apps, like I've never done them, but like, I've like done them with Jennifer in terms of like going through guys and swiping with her. And I was like, this is so fucked up because I'm literally judging everyone yeah. based off their appearance. Correct. So to me, I'm going to have to meet you in person because it's going to be a vibe off our energy because I can't, Same. especially with those nice guys. Right. Because like, also, I've also had this like new thing where I'm like, I would like to be attracted to you physically right away and not yeah. have to like grow to like you anymore. Yes. Because I'm done with that. Like, that's not fair. I'm, I don't think that's fair anymore. 
yeah. because it's yeah. and I don't find a lot of men attractive unless they're famous so if a guy in real life comes up to me and I'm attracted to him I'm like oh my god are we going out are we going to be together because that's rare I can't think See, of like a single and for man me, looks aren't important like I don't even need they're to be like the people for me, but I want the people that, that like I've been the most physically attracted to it has nothing to do with their look it's just like the energy that I'm just yeah. really mashing with in that moment and it has nothing to do with like their face their I mean a little bit about their height but like it you know there are some minimum that are height? Non-negotiable. what's a deal breaker for for height uh five, for me I yeah. would say, I'm, I'm a little bit shorter so I would say like I could do five eight five nine Okay, cool, cool. Right. I'm five ten. I always wonder about that. Like, like if uh, what what the what the barometer is. So you're you're short, Jennifer. What's short to you? What, how tall are you? Well, I'm I'm not short. I'm average, but I'm five four. But okay, yeah, that's cool. Most yeah, guys are taller than me, so I do have like a little bit more leeway than like Katie would or like some of my other friends. The Katie would like dated, five seven, right? I'm five seven. I've okay. dated shorter. I've dated like in the fives. Um, and I personally, <laughs> once again, am now going for, I just think like when I'm in heels, I would like to be like at least eye level. So for me, at least six is in I a do. real six foot, not like a liar. Who's like every guy you subtract two inches. They tell you they're six, two, they're not six, two, they're six, one and a quarter, or like there's every single time I'm like, we're not rounding up. Stop rounding yeah, up yeah, in yeah, situations. Yeah. Um, yeah. so ideally <laughs> I would like you to be over six foot, but that's just because when I'm in heels, I like. I'd like to be eye level. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's me. like, it's not even like a, it's not like a deal breaker for me. Right. Like, yeah. I would like for you to be of a certain height, but like, it's really like not that big of a deal to me. Mm-hmm. Like, like I said, it's, it's more your, your energy. energy. And then like, are you coming with your A game? Cause there's nothing that pisses me off more. Cause like, I don't date often. So like, if I choose to spend my time with you and you aren't bringing your A game, then that shit pisses me off. Like I went on a date with a guy who was like a friend of a friend, um, like last month and his idea of a first date. And I know he had, I know he has a decent job. I know he has money, but, and he did pay for everything. Don't get me wrong. But like his idea of a first date was to like, take me to a, a dive bar. And to me, that's like extremely disrespectful that's tacky. because that's telling that's me tacky. that you yeah. don't like, you don't see me as anything more than a hookup because what do you do at a bar? You get fucked up and you hook up. Like yeah. that is you know, you basically brought me to a horror house. At least take me to a lounge or something. (laughs) Yeah, no, at least like, I mean, I'm hungry. I'm a hungry bitch. This ass doesn't stay fat by me not nibbling on nuts, you know? I need like food. So take me out to dinner. Even if it's not like the nicest dinner, like just like show some intention. We could go for drinks, but like not a dive bar. Like just like go to somewhere normal A cocktail bar. Yeah, like somewhere, like anywhere that's like a little nicer. Like I don't need to go to like fucking Mastro's on the first date. Like no, but it's just it's like the the intention that it shows. And he could have been extremely serious and want something with me, but like for me, it's already done. Like it's already cut off. Like we are not going anywhere because what am I supposed to like tell our kids that Daddy took me to a dive bar, like a cheap hooker, on the first night, like. It'd be one thing if you guys like were out with friends and like, that's how you met and you were like, oh, okay. And had a connection, but that's like totally different. And then that's not a date. Right. I'm I'm just saying it'd be different that way. But like, or if he like, eventually you guys were dating and was like, Hey, let's go to like, do something different tonight. And like, went to like a dive bar. But but, yeah. But like not in the beginning, like, but yeah, I bring out your game. Nice guys. Also, I think like at least I found this with like older men they don't have a they don't know when like women or girls are like not fucking interested I'm like Mm. you fucking are creepy and weird like Mm. I don't know how to fucking help you with this dude my dude like this is like they're like come on I'll I'll take you here like they're more inclined to like try to wine and dine you but it's like I don't want to wine and dine with you right like you know what I mean so they don't get the hint of what you're trying to say no and that's not good Oh, like or they're like like I've had older like be like well what's wrong with me like a you'll go for that dude I'm like because that dude's not fucking annoying me well, like he's and not I feel annoying like the me. older you get the more set in your ways you are like that's just right. bottom line and then also you've gotten to a place in your life probably where you've been able to get there through control so you just feel like you can power through anything like oh she doesn't like me I can make her like me like no the fuck you can't you know like yeah just chill 
but like you older were, men, I feel like, and, and that's I think why that's why like older men go for girls in their twenties too, yeah. because in your twenties, you're still learning who the fuck you are. You're still making stupid decisions. And then you can kind of mold her into what you want her to be. Totally. Like, you can power now, through. I'm like, you're not going to control me, bitch. You think you can Yeah, you can take advantage. Do? Yeah, and that's, and that's taking right. advantage. I, I haven't been on a first date in probably eight years. My go-to was typically sushi bars or tapas bars because you can okay. eat, but it's not like super Heavy. formal or serious. Yeah. But they got cocktails. I don't know. Is that a good call for a first date? Yeah. Yeah. No, if it's I trendy, went on a very spot. nice first date with this super, super nice guy. And we had tapas and then we got a drink after. And it was a very nice date. You know, like I was very happy with that date. Um, but yeah, the, also a date would go happened. really well, but like know, it's but the, I've what? gone on great dates, but that doesn't because, mean like I feel a connection. Yeah, a because I'm not, everything. I'm just like, I don't know with a first date. I'm just probably like if I function very much like uh, what you would think the stereotypical man is like, like if I hit it on the first night, I probably don't see it going anywhere, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, I hear you. It's, it's a good reason to string it out. It's it. Uh, I'll, I'll end on this note. You said, uh, Katie, you, you said you like famous guys. I don't know if you you have. Similar well, I wouldn't actually for- date them. But like, I mean, physically, I'm attracted to famous men. That's like who are some of these. But who are these? Some of these people, like, like for example, are there any Golden State Warriors players, or are, who are some of, of the course, famous? Of course, Steph Curry. Oh. If my if I could build my ideal perfect man, yes. Steph would be like Steph and Curry. F- from top to bottom. Everything about him is perfect. Um, but Damn, I, it's only yeah. because I do. I wish I saw men in real life and were like attracted to them. A hundred percent. It's like my goal of life is to be like look at you right away and be like, oh my god, you're so attractive. But I think with famous people, it's just like it's not like because they're famous. It's just like I find them attractive. Like Travis Kelsey, Chris Evans, um, and I have crushes on people who aren't known to be attractive celebrities. Totally. Like who? Yes. Um. Chad Kruger from Nickelback. I have a fat crush on him. He's not ugly though. Not, like, he's not hot. great. <laughs> I mean, but like he's a type. I wouldn't he's tell a, that to the world. He's, but and I tell it here to we the are. world. Anyone yeah, who will clearly. listen. But see, when I told people, they go, "Oh, so we're going obtainable?" And I go, "Duh! Like, do you know me to go for anyone but obtainable?" As if I've met him before. Like, but like, yeah. Like Jennifer, who are you? Some of your uh, who are some of the famous men that you're attracted to? If you, don't mind, if you don't mind me asking. Um, some of them are similar to Katie. Like I do like Travis Kelsey and I do like Chris Evans. Mm-hmm. Um, America, baby. I, I see it. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's this one kid on TikTok that I really like. His name's Jemmy. Um, and then like, I don't know. It's always I don't really have random. Like a ton of, yeah. It's like random celebrity crushes. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, none of them are like similar. The only thing that I would say is similar between like, uh, what's it called uh Travis and Chris is they have swag and that's oh, something Jennifer and I are very is... big on absolutely like it's a 100%. must it's, it's like I wrote must. it down in like my list of qualities it was like ha- like how to have swag. and it's not even like what you think because you can't see it it's not it, like no, oh it's like not, that it's outfit not a physical trait swaggy. no it's, it's the like attitude right it's confidence I imagine right. confidence is a huge thing yeah I get it yeah Yes. So that's why it's hard because it's like, yes, I would like to be physically attracted to someone right, right off the bat. But like with girls, you can grow to like people, unfortunately. It goes both ways though. It goes both ways. And and, and by the way, Katie, I'm with you. I, I do not get attracted to people easily. It's actually very hard for me. And that's part of the reason why I hate being single is because it's like, it's like shit, man. Like I, I, right. I can't, I can get like, that. I see I get that. every one of the, yeah, I see almost every person in the world or if you're single and, you know, and I'm just like, I don't want to be with any of you. I, I, you know, but I don't want to be alone either. And just, it's just, it's just a shitty situation. I mean, there. I will level with you. Like level. it isn't fun to do things by yourself. Like I do like having a companion. I mean, right now it's my girl, Katie. She fills that void for me. That's but huge. Like, probably right. that is huge. if I didn't have a close friend, then yeah, I might be a little bit more apt to be seeking a relationship or if I, yeah like if I moved away like I would be like okay I get why people would want to be in a relationship well, I, have, I don't like, know I moved away and but you, you found know friends. <laughs> yeah I found friends right but, so, but um, it's, I can say you didn't find friends I could see yeah. I can see the draw to companionship like her friend recently just started hanging out with someone and she's like oh I like actually like hanging out with him like I enjoy his company which is really rare for her as well and she's almost like embarrassed to admit it and I'm like it's okay like we can like people (laughs) like because I feel like we come off as like these like 
not like man haters or anything like that. It's just, we don't need that to validate our lives is right. the thing. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. healthy. That's healthy. I'm, I'm not advocating for that. I just, I just find life a lot more pleasurable when you're, and again, I'm, I'm not, I'm so against hustle culture. Like I'm all about just chilling, uh, having a laid back lifestyle, like, and having someone to just watch amazing TV shows with is really all I'm asking. And for. if, all and I do that with yeah. myself and my friends and I'm so good with it, but like, I go. will say I, if I found that with someone, I would love that. Like yes. to watch my shows with, to go do things with, like, I would love that. It's just, yeah. I haven't found that person. So it's until then I'm, totally. it's not easy, but I no. would, would I, would I like it? Sure. It's just <laughs> like, I, have I mean, to I have person. never, you know, like, like our friend, we were saying, you know, she was like, I really enjoy hanging out with this guy. Like I have never in my life and it's probably right. the people that I'm attracting, but I've never in my life thought like, wow, I just genuinely enjoy my time with this person. Like that mm. is a rarity. Like I just, oh. if you're there, typically it's just like, you're there. And then I'm like, yeah. okay, can you leave? Like, this I gotta lightning. watch my show. Like, when can I go home? Like, can I go <laughs> yeah. home? No, but if you feel like that, then you're nowhere the right person. I, I think uh, well, that's yeah. simple. Like, um, <laughs> Which we're aware also, Literally, not a, no guy that I've talked to is in the right But person. you also have to be, like, willing to be open-minded. And, and part of that involves the boundaries coming down and- Right, uh, which yeah, we you, are, you which we are now slowly Good. starting to do. But, like, that takes a lot of work. And, like, that doesn't just like happen overnight and it's kind of mm. like a fake it till you make it sort of a thing like I say affirmations now every day about it just because like I'm trying to open myself up to it like oh, yeah. and my psychic was like you need to start wearing pink more and not so much black as I'm wearing a and black that's shirt. why her hair is pink. and oh, <laughs> I was gonna do pink way before she said that but okay I like, okay I gotta <laughs> I just am slowly gonna do it slowly gonna do it oh but my it's god a fake it till you make it <laughs> this was a pleasure brutally blunt podcast is the instagram handle you're on tiktok too how can people find you there and anything else you want to promote about your show yeah, which i want to try to bring handle. you to into our the brick berry's house but go ahead what else yes. what else promote promote plug go for it please same handle on tiktok um we're pretty funny on there too i don't know you guys check out an episode we just brutally. talk about we just talk shit but really if you're easily blunt. offended, I wouldn't listen, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're easily offended, mm -hmm. just jump off a cliff, man. I mean, right. I, the yeah. world has too many easily offended people in my book, but that's just me. Um, I love you too. Thank you. This was a pleasure. Well, thanks for having offend us you. on. I, I didn't say anything that was You bad. didn't oh, at no, all. Never. I hope we didn't offend you. No, no, that's no. That's no, always no. our biggest concern is <laughs> no, offending no. others. No, we're all yeah. good. <laughs> well, all and good. I just want to like leave you with this little note, Please. Cyrus. Please. You're going to find the person that is meant for you that you're going to level with. And that's going to be Don't. someone that fills up your tank as much as you fill up their tank. Thank you. Um, but, so. you know, just, maybe just sit back for a Don't second. Don't live in fear. Right. Don't live in fear. And maybe just sit back for a second and see if that person comes to you. Sounds good. I think that's sage advice. Thank you. I will. I'll listen. I will listen. And you two have fun with your incredible confidence and your so uh, and your, your security that is a bound where you don't need anyone. I envy that. Yeah. That is a such a healthy attitude because I guarantee you're both happy. Good for you. Congratulations. Brutally Blunt is the name of the podcast. You can follow them on Instagram, TikTok at Brutally Blunt podcast. I don't know why it's so hard to say that. Is it easier for you two to call your say your no. show name? Bru mm -mm. Brutally blunt. It looks great on paper when I say it. Brutally it blunt. I don't know why that's hard. Is that hard? Is it just me? Brutally it's hard. Blunt. Yeah, it's a tongue twister. Let's say BB. <laughs> the double BB. <laughs> BB with but on paper it looks good, but on paper it looks amazing. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. Um, enjoy New York. Enjoy Southern California. And let's do this again soon. I'm down. All right. Yeah, yes. thanks so much. Thanks for you having us. I'll come on your show next time if you want. I'll yes. totally, yeah. yeah, I'll be the guinea Definitely. pig. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>